you want to uh do you got you got any segments or games or anything you want to play before we uh, jump in? Any any controversy you want to uh, address <laughs> this week? Always. Why does every episode of this show start with us addressing a controversy? We're ahead of the curve, you know. We got to get out ahead of it. That's that's how you do it. <laughs> God, I'm gonna kill my fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, get out of my cereal bowl. <laughs> <laughs> right Back to the pods we cast along the way. I'm Spencer. And I'm Ryan. And welcome to our fifth episode in our ongoing roundtable pop culture series where we just talk about uh, typically whatever's on our minds. Uh, the last couple weeks we uh, talked about our top favorite Simpsons episodes. Hopefully you've had a chance to listen to those by now and check some of those out. Uh, Ryan, how's uh, how's your week going so far? It's going really well. I really liked our Simpsons episode. Uh, I really liked our Simpsons episode, although uh, I've never seen an episode of The Simpsons. That's just how good of a podcast this is. I was amazed how much you were able to bluff your way through that, not having. I know, a thing. I know. I'm really more of a. I'm really more of a Mary Tyler Moore guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know that episode of Mary Tyler Moore. Let's sing the Mary Tyler Moore song together. Okay. Right. Right. Mary. Tyler seems Moore. today that all you see is Mary <laughs> Tyler, Moore Tyler Moore and on... sex on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, sure. Uh, Rest in peace, Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. 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 Well, that now that the condolences are out of the way, Spencer, uh, so I have a, I have a bit of a, a confession to you. Oh yeah. What's that? Is this, an, is this, this week's controversy? <laughs> I guess so. We always have a controversy every week that we must adjust. Maybe that's a bad sign that maybe maybe we're not the people that should be doing this. I don't know but... if it's a bad sign. I just think it means that we're we're honest. You know, we have very high standards here on the pods we cast along the way. What with all of our pop culture jokes and fart sounds, and you know, I, I happen to know that wacky I reg- theme songs. Ira Glass should start every podcast by apologizing. He should just <laughs> apologize, get it out of the way. Uh, he and and who are who are the other radio guys? Howard Stern, just all the shock jocks. Just you'll know, be like, you know what? We're sorry. We're sorry. They can be sarcastic about it. We're sorry. <laughs> you know when uh, when I was doing uh, radio for a brief stint at uh, SOU, uh, mm-hmm. there there was like a rule of things. Uh, they actually uh, started doing uh, started off by doing an orientation for us. And uh, one of the things they said was never apologize on radio because it takes away from your integrity as a radio personality. So, really? Yeah, it, it basically was just like if, if you're wrong or you flub a line, it, it, was, it was a couple of things. Uh, it was to help prevent dead air. It was mm-hmm. to help keep you from stumbling. It was just like if you, if you slip up. Like, you know, just don't say, oh, sorry, and go back and apologize on, on air. And I think they meant that in a live sense, not necessarily, you know, how we we are uh, apologizing every week. We should apologize every week just because we're still doing the show. We should apologize to our viewers that are have been guilted into or tricked into listening to all of our nonsense. Yeah, sorry, Mom. <laughs> sorry, Spencer's Mom. Um, but I... <laughs> um, my... Uh... You know, it's interesting. I was just watching, there was, I, I'm subscribed to a YouTube channel that does like top 10 lists. It's Watch Mojo. It's kind of, it's pretty popular. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Lo- I love Watch Mojo. Good yeah, stuff. They, they just did a video on um, YouTube apologies, like the worst YouTube apologies. Like that was their latest video. And it's, it's really interesting to see um, the mentality of people that like have to, that are in like, the pub that are in public life and need to apologize for something and they do it in the most insincere uh (laughs) douchey way that just never fails to make it worse um and so i always said if i if we ever had like a big like blowout if we ever like 
did something where we had to apologize publicly. Like, I think the best way to go to ballot it is to almost not apologize to almost just like, uh, you know, put up something on like your Twitter that's like sincere, but like not put any of the spotlight on like yourself at all. But it's impossible for like these YouTube people to do because it's their entire life. I don't know. It's just interesting. The idea of the public apology. Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because you and I have talked about this uh, outside of the podcast before, but um, YouTube celebrity is such a strange phenomenon because they are held in the same regard as a lot of, uh, you know, traditional celebrities are. And yet these people have no preparation, no training, nothing that prepares them to go into being in the limelight. And so many times have we seen YouTube celebrities implode and just destroy their livelihood because they don't know how to handle themselves in a PR situation. Um, I mean, we, we could rattle off, uh, and we, we don't have to call anybody out specifically on the show, but we've seen so many different YouTube celebrities you know, fall from grace because they just didn't know how to handle a situation. And I think a lot of that just comes from their new found, uh, quickly found, stardom absolutely and it's the it's the fact that so many of them are so young too like a lot of these people that are putting themselves out there like some of them have been doing it since they were like 12 13 years old that's kind of that's kind of the era that we're in yeah um and they develop such strong powerful uh followings and i think a lot of them have quite a bit of money too and it's just you know every i think every media person out there uh, should have some sort of PR person, which is why um, I've hired a PR person. Oh, fantastic. For, for the two of us. I, I think you're really going to enjoy him. I, I, his name is uh, uh, Squat Diddley. Uh, and his, his, uh, his fees, his fees for PRing are uh, um, uh, $5,000 a minute. Oh, um, but uh, but I, I think he's going right. to be worth it. I think he's going to be worth it. I mean, well, we we have it in our budget, right? What can you do a budget crunch on us, Brian, Spencer? We don't have a budget. You know, I've I've been trying to get sponsors for the show, but every sponsor has just said that we just rip on name brands, and I don't think anybody wants to be our sponsor, Ryan. I don't think we have the kind of money. And besides, we spend all our money on our music breaks, man. The licensing to those songs that we play are really expensive, and I just think it's going to be. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny joke, Spencer. No, anyway, no. Uh, so I, I actually have him here. I actually have Squat Diddley here. If you if you want to talk to him, do you do you do you want to meet him? Uh, yeah, I would like to meet this person that you hired without any consultation or consent on my end. All right, sure. Let, let, let me go get him. Let me go get him. Hey, hey, Squat, come o- come over here. Yes, hello. Is this is this Squat Diddley? Yeah, yeah, it's me. I'm Squat Diddley. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, hey, Squat. Um, yeah. Is it true that you really charge five thousand dollars an hour? No, oh, you, you know, I, I, I think that things get misconstrued sometimes. You know, I just want to publicly apologize to anyone out there that thinks that uh, that uh, that uh, that I'm cheap and I'm whoring around. Um, you, you know, all of these, all of these accusations have, have no have no bearing at all. Uh, uh, let, let me just talk to my PR person. You, you, you got to meet my PR person. Have you met my PR person? No, no you. I didn't know PR people needed PR people. All right, this is my PR person. Now, let me get her. Uh, her, her name is uh, uh, Linda Cardellini. No relation to the actual Linda Cardellini, the actress. Uh, but but she's very good. Linda, Linda, come in here. You're kind of here. Yes, hi, Spencer. How are you? Uh, hi, L- Linda. It's, yeah. Yes, hello. Uh, did you have a PR question for me? Yeah, you're, so you're Squat Diddley's PR person. Are you charging him as much as he's charging us? How much does, do you charge him for his... I'm, I'm charging him about $10,000 an hour. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ryan, I think, I think that we need to stop being podcast personalities and just start being PR people. I agree. I think it's a good business. Uh, Linda, how long have you been in PR? I've been in PR for about an hour. Wow, like that's very lucrative. I mean, how how could you how could you do that? Well, I have a very good PR person. Well, really, who's your PR person? My PR person is Spencer Richardson. Uh, really, Spencer? What? Wow, I I didn't I didn't know that. Like, you've been in PR. How long have you been in PR? Uh, about uh, six seconds, apparently. Oh my God! Well, how much do you pay Spencer? I pay Spencer a million dollars a millisecond. What? Oh, that's wow. amazing. Oh, wait a minute, Ryan. Hang on. I just got an email. 
You just got an email. Wait, I, yeah, it says, I, I just got an email and says, I have been fired for controversial opinions. Yellow shirts are just as good to wear as blue shirts. Uh, yes, I've decided to split up with uh, Spencer Richardson's PR rep because of his controversial statements about yellow shirts and blue shirts. I've decided to part ways. I'm joining the Los Angeles Lakers who uh, support gold shirts. So goodbye. Uh, okay. Okay. Do I, am I still going to get paid? She she left. Oh. Okay. So I, I think that's it. Oh, I'm still here. Oh, Squat Diddley's still here. Do you have anything to say to Squat? Uh, Squat, you know, I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go, too. Uh, we're still working on any sort of sponsorship deal for this podcast, and I just don't think that you're going to have to. Um, I, I don't think your your services are going to be needed at this time. We're, we're just not going to be able to afford your, your retainer. Yeah, I, I think that's understandable. Yeah. I, 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 I fuck cats. Hey, speaking of fucking cats, let's talk about Tiger King. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> Thank what you. What a what what a segue and what a what a what a admission of guilt from Squat Diddley. Yeah, seriously. I hope that he kept his PR person on. He he just he just took off running from there. I don't know if you can see, but he's still jogging down my driveway. <laughs> it looks he's clutching his chest and he's down. I think he's dead, and I don't think he's ever coming back. Yay! Yay! Spencer. Oh, yes, Ryan. I, w- I want to hear all of your thoughts about Tiger King, but before I do, uh, I think we have a music break. That sounds like a good idea. So, uh, in in honor of uh, Tiger King. Uh, Ryan, you want to set this one up? You mentioned that uh, one of one of your favorite bands uh, from your childhood, Offspring, uh, oh, just yes. did a recent cover of a song from Tiger King. So why don't you set us up for that one, and we'll 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 come back after the break. Absolutely. Uh, this is the Offspring's "The Cat's Out of the Bag and Out of the Bathroom." And we're back. That was the offspring. So, uh, you ready? Who's to... offspring? That's a great question. Whose offspring are the offspring? Hey, uh, leave Not... it, leave it, leave a comment below if you know whose <laughs> offspring they are. Somebody probably does, and they know like the background. Like, oh yeah, it was made by this. Yeah. Well... And and I hate I hate that I I like the offspring a lot, but I hate that you introduced it as my favorite band. <laughs> and now now I don't know like why they're called that. <laughs> Be like one of those sisters, like, oh yeah, like, you know, it's this Luna band, like they're known as like ACDC. <laughs> like, what does ACDC stand for? Like, I don't know. It's, you know, alternating current. current. What does ACDC? You probably know. A- AC versus DC voltage is alternating current versus direct current, which just means the flow of of electricity uh, is either uh, coming uh, in alter alternating uh, patterns, or it's just a direct flow of electricity. Um, like a P- like a Pikachu. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like Pikachu versus yeah. Raichu. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now I know, now I understand. God, we are <laughs> fucking nerds. <laughs> oh, you gotta, you gotta explain to th- me things in terms of like '90s video games, and then I'll get it. Yeah, you're you're yeah. such a millennial, Ryan. Capitalism is kind of like Yoshi's Island. Like you, do, that's how you gotta reach me. Oh yeah, which which part of capitalism is touch fuzzy get dizzy? Trickle down economics. <laughs> hey, hey, all right. Hey. So uh, on on to our main segment this week. Uh, in in traditional the pods we cast along the way fashion, talking about things that uh, nobody cares about anymore, but we still have an opinion on. Uh, let's get talking about Tiger King. 
Yeah, let's let's talk about him. Let's talk about it. Let's let's dive into Let's talk about him. All let's... of our feelings cuz we do we do have feelings and opinions on this show. Um Brian, you and several other people uh, in my family cajoled me into watching Tiger King. Because originally I saw it and I was like, this just looks like a documentary about a guy who abuses animals. I'm going to watch it and just get angry. And I did at certain points. But it oh, yeah. it just goes so beyond that. Uh, do you want to kind of set us up here and sort of explain? Uh, for those of you uh, who haven't seen Tiger King uh, at this point... Um, kind of fill us in about what it's about and what sort of the, the appeal is you know your sort of elevator pitch to me for it i felt was pretty spot on sure uh well it, tiger king follows a documentarian who uh originally was kind of looking at some uh animal practices uh of exotic animals like you know people taking uh tigers and adopting them and keeping them in unsanitary conditions his journey eventually led him to uh three um three major big cat uh owners in the country uh one of them is doc antle the other is carol baskin and the most eccentric of all of them is joe exotic uh who kind of runs away with uh his huge oh, what's What's the best way to put him? Uh, he's he's the embodiment. He's my favorite of, Reno nine one one character. Yes, he's everyone's favorite Reno nine one one character. That's a great way to put him. And uh, the more he kind of chases fame, and the more he kind of chases uh, his own public image, uh, the more you see his soul start to deteriorate. Until, um, not necessarily spoilers, because it's brought up in the first episode of the documentary, or at least alluded to. And I think probably everyone's in the know. He eventually uh, is arrested for putting a hit on uh, a competitor of his, Carol Baskin, who he's had this long rivalry with that yeah. we've seen because this documentary crew was able to capture him over the years. Um, it's it's very fascinating. It is the it is the pinnacle of trash TV. Like you know how like in like the early 2000s i would say like if you turned on like fox like you would see like reality shows that were uh just about like terrible human beings or like very grimy like morally compromising yeah. reality shows competition. It's, it's it's a modern day sideshow at a carnival like that's yes. that's the that's the metaphor that i kept thinking of i was like wow you know freak shows never really went away they just changed formats that's right. If Joe Exotic were around, but that's like, also being disparaging to the people who were in freak shows. I mean, those were those were decent human beings who just had no other way to make a living. These people are just garbage humans. It's it's, it's true. It's true. Um, and you know, it's it's about like the characters that uh, inhabit Joe's world, and they're all very eccentric. So yeah. uh, it's it's horrifying. Um, but it's like a car crash. You can't quite look away. Like, no, I don't. I, I don't think there's anything else to it. Um, I think if you want to watch it and uh, get very angry about uh, the conditions that these animals are kept in, I think there's something for you. And I think if you want to watch a character study of a very weird individual and his friends and enemies, uh, I think there's something for you too. It, characters are such an, an appropriate way to frame them because – they really are so cartoonish. You yes. you have a hard time, like you remember, like oh, these are real people doing real things, um, right? And and uh, we'll we'll just say uh, right here up front, spoilers for uh, Tiger King if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's I would say it's definitely worth a watch for many reasons. Uh, Ryan, one of your reasons being it's it's a great way to look at how to write characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's true and and that's the thing is like reality tv uh, you mentioned on fox and things it's not reality tv no no reality tv is is unscripted there there are so many things being done behind the scenes to push people in one direction and pull strings and things like that and uh one of the things i think this series does is it definitely paints 
a slightly skewed and manipulative view of these characters, and they push you towards sympathies of certain characters. And uh, I, I want to start off, uh, if you're down, to, to go over one of the things that's been heaviest on my mind since watching it, and that is Carol Baskin. Mm-hmm. Um, Carol Baskin is one of uh, Joe Exotic's com- uh, competitors. Uh, she's also the, his primary antagonist, uh, so to speak. And the, the whole thing about all of these uh, wildlife, quote-unquote, wildlife preserve people um, across the United States is they, they all own what they refer to as sanctuaries and reservations for large cats and exotic animals. And anyone who has a modicum of interest in animal protection knows that they are not qualified to take care of these these animals um nope. angering uh element number one right is that these these animals should not be in the care of any of these people nobody makes a good case for why they have them uh in their custody i will say though despite the fact that carol baskin has been painted as the villain in this show and this is going to be a hot take I don't understand why everybody latched onto her as the primary antagonist. I I, you know, I I get a lot of that has to do with the fact that she killed her husband, uh, which we don't know is a fact, <laughs> but we do think is is likely the case. Um, beyond that, if we're looking at it from the person who takes care of the animals, she's just as bad as everybody else, yes, but I just feel like... Everybody really latched on to hating Carol Baskin because they looked to Joe Exotic as the hero, which I also think is incredibly misguided. Um, I don't think that the documentary put forth enough information for me to really feel as hateful towards her as a lot of people do. And maybe maybe I'm missing something. Uh, Ryan, maybe you can lend some perspective to, to help me figure this out. No, no, I think that's I think that's totally fair. Uh, I think that Carol Baskin as a character, I think they they mean to portray her as somebody who's a bit of a hypocrite. I, I think that's her big thing. I don't even yeah. necessarily think that um, the evidence in the documentary or the evidence that people give through. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's a ton of evidence to say that Carol Baskin murdered her husband. I think she, I think the consensus is she knows more than she lets on. I think that's a very fair baseline to go with just to judge whether or not she did or didn't do it. Um, Yes. But I think of the three of them, I think that she's the less despicable. Because I think at the end of the day, despite everything, I think she is probably the one that's taking care of her animals. Well, and that, um, that was the, the most frustrating thing is that Joe Exotic makes all of these sweeping accusations about the fact that she keeps all, her, all of her tigers in small cages and doesn't give them any room to move around and yada, yada, yada. And yet the documentary does nothing to show us her side of the story. And that's where I get a little frustrated with how this was edited is that it, it wasn't for a documentary, it wasn't being as balanced towards both sides of the argument as it could have been, mm-hmm. but that's the narrative that you've got to construct, right? This, and right. It, it's so funny, you know, you talk about, uh, we were talking about reality TV being, you know, not real. Even this was skewed in such a way that it's like, okay, there's clearly an agenda about who they want us to sympathize with, you know, in all of this. Can I, can I ask you a question and, um, it, it might catch you a little off guard because we didn't, talk about it beforehand do yeah. you have a favorite reality show Ooh, um it it really depends on how you define reality are we talking like uh ongoing series following a person's life or any sort of like competition type show anything like uh, that any I, I would say any show that um uh tries to tries to make the case that it's true me I'll, I'll lead it to like a movie do you have like a favorite like documentary this this is a uh, shameful for me to admit i'm not a big documentary person mm-hmm. um the the few that i have watched are very inconsequential in terms of the material that they cover um i'm not really a big true crime follower person i know that's a big thing right now in the podcasting world um mm-hmm. oh know. yeah definitely uh 
I, I think those things are fascinating when I get into them, but those are also big rabbit holes that I have to kind of keep myself from falling into. Speaking of, sure. though, there is a YouTube series called Down the Rabbit Hole that uh, dives into um, a lot of internet-related uh, things. Um, th I watched a few. One was about, um, you know, the YouTube uh, YouTuber personality Spoonie? Um, yes. He gets made fun of a lot on Oni Plays, uh, which, is a, which is a YouTube yeah. Let's Play series. Uh, they take a lot of pot shots at him. And I was curious. I was like, "What's the, what's the deal with this guy? Like, why does he get all the hate that he gets?" Um, and then I watched. Uh, uh, it was like a forty-five minute long uh, YouTube uh, mini doc on him, and it's like, "Oh wow!" Like, getting back to our topic about you know YouTubers not knowing how to handle themselves. Um, that's a big one. Uh, oh yeah. And and sort of the spiraling and the self destruction. They also do one on uh, Final Fantasy House, which. I'm just going to leave it at that. Look it up on your own time. It's wild. Final Fantasy House? If okay. you like Tiger King and you like trashy drama, check out Final Fantasy House. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos that talk <laughs> about it. Um, okay. Probably my favorite, like, produced documentary is a documentary all about the history of uh, horror movies in uh, in America, in American cinema. Uh, but, again, really inconsequential stuff. I liked Survivor as a kid, but I really didn't get into reality TV because even as a kid I was like, this is stupid and fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. I mean, it, well, the thing is, like, everybody has an agenda. That was a big thing. Like, when, when I was a kid, there was a show called Joe Millionaire. And years later, um, people have sued that show because well, the concept of the show is that there's this guy um, who goes on and says, like, he's worth, like, millions. And he has his own mansion, private island. And um, these women come on and compete for his infections, for his affections. But the twist is that he's the construction worker. Yes, that, I do. I do remember this show. Yes, and the other twist is that if the woman that he picks at the end hears this and decides to uh, stay with him anyway, then they will both get a million dollars. So they will. Uh, fulfill what they were they were going for in the end. Um, so they they would have controversies over that show because what they were doing is they were editing clips of his one on one dates with women to make it look like that they were having sex mm. when they weren't. Um, well, that was a that was a big thing. It was just like you know if you're on camera like you it, it's it's the inability to control how you're portrayed um whether or not it's fair like that's it's constantly what i'm thinking of when i watch shows like this it's just like all you need is like like a serious tone and like a few cuts and all of a sudden you're the villain yeah um, it's it's true it, and is that what they did with carol baskin i think I, I i don't know i think of the people in the documentary i think she had the most enemies because they were interviewing people from the big cat community and yeah. she was trying to destroy that community i think well I, I think she had enemies on both sides right like she had enemies in animal rights activists but she also had enemies in uh, you know the she she was just caught between two warring factions and she didn't have a commitment to either uh, i think right. what it boiled down to was money but even then i think a lot of that comes from the people that she had in her lives to support her, which was also one of the big driving uh, factors behind the conspiracy theory that she killed her husband is because mm -hmm. he had all the money and she wouldn't have to worry about money for the rest of her life if he just disappeared and left it all to her. Um, and that's, and that's classic murder mystery setup, right? Like who doesn't want to believe that that is the case, whether or not it actually happened. Um, it makes for a hell of a story. And at the end of the day, Netflix is an entertainment company. They want to entertain you. Mm -hmm. That's that, why. That, that's that, why... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say, that's why I think Serial was such a big hit. I don't know if you listened to Serial, the podcast, but mm -hmm. as it was kind of like a true crime documentary that was told in real time. Um, and as the interviewer, Sarah Koning, started getting into it, um, she started to discover more and more evidence that maybe the person that uh, she thinks is innocent might not be innocent. That's, that's yeah. where the thrill of it came from. But at the end of the day, like, what we want is we want uh, we want like the twist, like we want the twist that doesn't often come from real life. Yeah. And when we don't get that, we're left unsatisfied. So that's why we're left to uh, 
you know, think of the worst case scenario when it comes to some of these real people. Did uh, did you ever watch uh, the first season of American Vandal? I did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the spoilers here, too, for American Vandal. What I really liked about that was it was it was a parody of these true crime docuseries. And uh, I can appreciate anything that 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 parodies something really well. And that particular uh, which was also done by Netflix, uh, miniseries did a really good job of that. And they get into the the topic of how the, the it's it's all about um, a high school kid who got uh, expelled for committing um, it was like it was like a vandalism uh, crime on the cars in the parking lot of the high school, like small yeah. insequential stuff. But they they set the whole thing up like it, there's a student uh, documentarian who is chronicling all of this and trying to prove his innocence. It's very making a murderer, right? It's very great. It's um, so great. But the second get, season's great too. I, I need to check the second season out. Um, but they get they get into the idea that it's like he, he, how the kid isn't doing it to prove the other kid's innocence. He's doing it because he wants to make a good documentary. And he's doing it for himself as much as he's doing it, you know, to help the other kid. And the big twist at the end is you, you think he's proven this kid's innocence and the kid is like no i did it and it's super unsatisfying in that sense because it's like you spend all this time trying to set up a twist that you know he is he is innocent and there's like a higher scheme or higher higher thing going on it's like no he just did it and uh that i i actually that, that's a slight correction I, he he didn't do it he did another thing that's because was, okay yes but 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 you are right. Like eventually at the end, like it's kind of revealed that it's not tied up in a neat little bow. I don't even think he makes a direct accusation as to who actually did the vandalism. Yeah, yeah. Thank uh, thank you. That that is an important uh, distinction to make. Um, but yeah, he. We'd like, we'd like to apologize. We'll we'll address this next what? week, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have something. We gotta have some controversy to address. Oh um, yeah. No, next week's controversy will be us uh, addressing the fact that we don't think Carol Baskins is big of a bitch as everyone says she is. Um, well, I think I, I, I think that I I think that she's flawed, and ultimately, like my thing, my takeaway from the documentary is like we gotta we gotta stop like all of this. I think all three places should be shut down. <laughs> yes, they, um, they should. I don't think that they're being kept humanely. Um, at least from like my perspective with the documentary. No, because I mean, you you look at. You know, and this is what made me so angry about the whole Joe Exotic thing and how people really have just sort of put him on a pedestal just because he's the main character. He's an interesting person. I think it's very interesting how he is, you know, living in the southern states and he is gay and he's a country singer and he's very eccentric. I think the biggest problem that we have in media right now is that people, we, we tend to make heroes out of people that we empathize with. Empathy does not beget a hero. Just because a person is yeah. empathetic doesn't make them a good person. It makes them human. And I think a lot of people latch on to the fact that Joe Exotic has flaws in that sense and that he is very human. He's still a bad person. You know, here here I am watching the show and, and still trying to wrap my head around why people think Carol Baskins is so terrible. And then you've got Joe Exotic who literally, like the moment these, these tiger cubs are born, separate them from the mother. And then it cuts to him like he's like, oh, I got to go sleep outside because these, these baby tigers are, are wailing all night. I'm like, yeah, because you took them away from their mother, you fucking psychopath. Like I yelled, I don't yell at the TV very often, <laughs> if at all. But I did in that moment. I was like, why why do people love this guy so much why the hell do they want to break him out of jail and to your point ryan you're absolutely right all of these places should be shut down um the, oh, yeah. who who was the um I'm, I'm trying to remember here the the caretaker uh that had their arm uh, bitten off uh, uh kelsey uh kelsey saffrey um this this yes. was the uh one of the assistant caretakers uh who there was an accident and they had their arm uh, ripped off by one of the one of the cats and at the end of the documentary, they're like, so who's the winner in this situation? And they just say, well, it's, it's not about who the winner is. It's the fact that the Tigers all lose. Yeah. And and I got really mad in that moment, too, because it's like Netflix lost the thread. And they kind of played their hand about how they don't necessarily, they didn't come out of the gate to make a series that made us get angry enough about this to make a big difference. You still see more activism going on right now to get Joe Exotic out of jail than to shut these places down. Yeah, well, I, I hope something comes of it. I, I truly do. I, I think it I brought a lot that... to light, uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's it's oh. just really disappointing that, you know, 
again, we got hung up on the things that are entertaining rather on, on the hard truths that we have to uh, confront. Yeah, I well, that's why I that's why I was disappointed um, when I saw that they had the uh, the post episode where they actually interview people from the show. I think that was kind of the thing that pushed it to saying this isn't a show about tigers. Like this is a show about characters. Like this is a show about yeah. like look at this guy. This is a show about like look how crazy he is. Like it's it it like you said it it showed their hand. So that's why I. Uh, I was just I was a little disappointed with how it wound up. Um I still think it's worth a watch though. Yeah, absolutely. It is it is crazy and it does highlight some uh pretty troubling things. Well, and and you know, maybe taking taking myself out of the equation and looking at it from the outside, we are angry about what happened to the Tigers. So maybe it still did get the message across. I, I think there are I'm not I'm not saying everybody is a is a Joe exotic sympathizer, but I, I guess, in a way, if you and I are here talking about how angry we are that this is a, is a thing that's happening, maybe it did get it across. Maybe it's maybe it's more clever than that. Because at the end of the day, Netflix is an entertainment company. They have to create a product that is entertaining to the people who are consuming it. And you are much less likely to get the message of these poor, abused animals across unless you wrap it in a slick, dramatic package. But that's also the risk that you run, that you lose the message in trying to code it in something that makes it more palatable to the audience i agree yeah so it, it i would say it's a necessary evil yeah a necessary evil no world look at that look at that look at look now we tied everything in a nice little yeah, bow here on the pods we cast along the way ah look at you i love this guy oh you hey, oh, oh, oh you <laughs> oh you oh man um but I, I I'm watching a I'm watching a documentary now, which I am enjoying immensely more than I would just enjoy Tiger King, uh, which is the Last Dance. Uh, this sounds Michael familiar, Ford. but uh, you'll have to you'll have to keep me in. Yes, um, he uh, it, it follows. Uh, it's really about the life and the career of Michael Jordan, but it focuses. It kind of jumps back and forth in time, but the the idea is that this is if not the greatest basketball team of all time uh it's simp it's one of the best and it's their final season before their coach gets fired and michael jordan retires for the second time and scotty pippen gets traded and it's all the drama that happens behind the scenes it's never before seen footage this is a celebrity that has been very uh, protective of his image and the things that are released about him for years and decades mm -hmm. and it's kind of coming at the perfect time and it's a great it's uh there are underdog stories this is an overdog story this is a <laughs> story of complete domination of uh one of the most powerful and talented athletes in the history of the united states possibly the world and um uh, there are no tigers that are harmed in the making of it. So that is my recommendation of the week. Hey, there you go. Hey, Bringing it that. all back. Bringing it all back. Yeah, good stuff. Um, good stuff. Hey, as long as we're talking recommendations, you know, here you are talking about the Dream Team. Um, I'll uh, I'll throw out what we do in the shadows because they have a whole bit that they uh, give a shout out to. <laughs> we were just watching that today. Yeah, and... that's 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 a fun show. If if you want to watch works. a documentary series that isn't real but is very funny, um... Tiger King. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, what we do in the shadows. Uh, it's actually it's based on a uh, oh gosh I don't even remember when that movie came out but uh, quite a few years ago it was one of Taika Waititi's first films. Uh, Taika Waititi, mm -hmm. of course, who did uh, Thor, uh, Ragnarok, and Jojo Rabbit, uh, to name a few. But uh, it's basically a uh, mockumentary series about vampires uh, living as, as uh, roommates together. <laughs> and uh, juxtaposed against, you know, the trappings of the modern uh, world. So it's it's really fun. And that's, I, that's we love that show. That's our, that's our favorite show in our household right now, my, my wife and I. Like, we, we get home every day. Or we get home, I think... I think it's on Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Wednesdays, and then uh, I just I check it out on Hulu on when it airs on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. This episode, this episode brought to you by uh, Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stream a show that 
your douchiest friend loves Amazon Prime. What's what's big on Amazon Prime right now? Who knows? Now now that everything and everyone is in lockdown, um, uh, no one's producing uh, anything. Is has Amazon got anything right now that's uh, relatively new that people are into? Up, Upload just came out. Upload is the new Greg Daniel show. We talked about Greg Daniels oh. on the podcast a lot. We were going through our Simpsons episodes. Uh, it's I haven't seen it yet, but I want to check it out. It looks very good placey. Um. I can appreciate that. Greg, Greg Daniels knows his comedy, so I'm going to definitely check out there. Uh, the Marvelous Miss Basil is a favorite of ours. Yes, another you really, really good like one. like that show? Oh, yeah, I love that show. Um, here, I, I just put down Amazon Prime, but, I, but there's some good stuff on it. And yeah. then, um, oh, Spencer, what's the show with Al Pacino? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I haven't heard about this. Is it, uh, there, is it an Amazon show? I think it might be. It's an Amazon show. I think it might be called Hunters, but don't quote me on that. In oh, fact, I uh yeah, where it's um where Al Pacino's like a Nazi hunter, right? Yes. Uh it's it stars Al Pacino and Ted Mosby. Yeah. Uh, uh that's that's an Amazon Prime show. That's uh yeah, you're right. It's called Hunters. Yeah, yeah. That's uh I I have lots of friends that really enjoy it. They say it's a tough watch, uh especially in the beginning. So there's your trigger warning, but that's supposed to be very, very good. It's got a hell of a cast. Find that scene. I my wife and I are also very big Jordan Peele fans. Oh yeah, yeah, same, same with my wife and I. Yeah, it's got uh, Jeffrey Wright, Al Pacino, Meryl Streep, Emma Thompson. Uh, it's, yeah, Meryl Streep's in that. Yeah, apparently. Wow. wow, that's that's quite the cast. Why don't we have a cast like that, Spencer? Um, because we're poor. We are poor. We we should reach out. If you could cast somebody in our podcast, an actor. To like play a role, like leave a comment below. Leave, leave a comment below, and we'll try to get them. We'll get to that in our mailbag. <laughs> Is it time to throw it to our mailbag after a quick music break? Yeah, let's let's take a quick music break. Maybe we'll do one more segment, and then we'll jump into our mailbag. Um, this is Meltdown by the Aquabats. We'll be right back. <laughs> Right, we're back. That was the Aquabats with Meltdown. Love the Aquabats. They just came out with a new song recently. You should check it out. Oh, really? What's it called? Uh, it's called "No One Wants to Party." <laughs> um, and I'm really? pretty, I'm, I... I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a it's a quarantine song. It's pretty good. They, have you ever heard their song "Pool Party"? It's like their ultimate party anthem song. I, I haven't. I when you, I, I'm actually not familiar with the Aquabats, but oh, they're I, they're I just assumed that the band. song, I assumed that the song was because that's what a bat underwater sounds like <laughs> you ever seen the video of the bat swimming no it's terrifying but uh yeah bats can swim who would have guessed huh yeah so here on our last segment of uh, the pods we cast along the way since we're still waiting on that mail bag to get its software upgrade um you want to do a uh you want to do another uh and landers Sure. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question from the internet, um, but to to spice things up, I'm gonna ask you a question from Yahoo Answers. Okay, I like this. Okay, you you'll have to give me a second to. This is the uh, the Yahoos we answered along the way. Is this uh, segment that we're calling on the show? Got a got a good one. Yeah, yeah, I do. You sound really, okay. <laughs> really sad about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna answer. Ask you a question from Yahoo Answers. All right, Spencer. Here's a question from Yahoo Answers. Okay. Uh, it's in society and culture is the top. Oh, great! That's everything we talk about on the pods we cast along the way. If you die in Canada, do you die in real life? 
Uh, no. <laughs> and that's all the time we that's have. That's all the time we have. And thank you for uh, for okay. joining us here on the uh, the pods we cast along the way. Uh, until next week, I'm Spencer. And I'm Ryan. Great. All right. <laughs> <laughs>